My name's Hannah and I am here. I've sailed off the world's largest coal port. I'm here with my friend Zianna and we are stopping this coal terminal from uh, loading all coal into ships and from unloading all coal from coal trains. This is part of the largest coal port in the world and we're here with Blockade Australia stopping the operations of the extractive hand of the biggest empire in the world. Australia was created as a colony to extract resources. It was a militarised ex resource extraction zone um, by the British Empire and to this day through the genocide of First Nations people, through the theft of land, it continues as a militarised resource extraction zone exploiting land and exploiting people and right now we're on Waramai and Awabakal country which is being used to ship off coal that's come from countries, um, from First Nations lands all across this continent and being sent to be burnt overseas as a part of the money making machine which is perpetually causing climate crisis which is driving us ever further towards the point of social collapse and so that's why me and Diana, maybe if Diana can you say something see if they can hear you can you hear me here I don't know we'll just check the mic out for a bit that's a good first thing to do um okay no one replied so we shall see um and yeah we are here We've abseiled off this stack of reclaimer. We've been here for about an hour, I would say. Came in at first light, which was really beautiful. And we're stopping all operations because Australia is a threat to this continent. Australia is a threat to every living thing on this continent. And that's why we're here with Blockade Australia to get in the way, stop the machine, get in the path of the destruction because the destruction won't stop itself. And we've seen time and time again that um, yeah, that the bureaucrats, they will maintain their power, they will, you know, push a few lines around and, you know, try and make things look a bit better perhaps, but, you know, we're 50 odd years into knowing that we are heading for, you know, social and ecosystem collapse with the climate crisis and still we're talking about, or, you know, now it's like a revelation that maybe um, 20 uh, 20, net zero by 2050 is an okay approach to take from there and we know that that's a death sentence even the most conservative climate science is saying that that is a death sentence that's what the IPCC report says and that is you know notoriously conservative and yes scummos scummos claim that that's what we're going for that's what that's where electoral politics is at and that's why Blockade Australia is doing something entirely different we're not into electoral politics we're not into one you know, one political party may be changing the way things are going around here because we've seen that that doesn't work. We've seen that the system is built on supporting each other. The corporations support the um, government institutions and the government institutions support the corporations and together they maintain their stronghold of power and they squash any dissent whenever they can and they have pushed us to this point of total ecosystem collapse, of total social collapse that we are on the verge of, on the brink of. And that's why people with Blockade Australia are getting in the way. That's why we're mobilising again next year in June in Sydney to shut down Australia's biggest city, to shut down the centre of political and economic power in this continent. So for anyone that's just joined us again, we are in the world's largest coal port. We have attached to a stack of reclaimer. Oh dear, I hope I haven't done this sideways. Could somebody tell me if, comment maybe, if the video is sideways for everybody and I'll flip it back the other way. Um, but yeah, here with Zianna, been here for about an hour and we are blocking all coal being put on these piles, these ginormous piles. And they come in from trains over that way and yeah, blocking them from being used one person in this facility shuts down all of the stackers and reclaimers that's all it takes while there's uninducted people on site they can't operate and so it can be really effective it's an incredible bottleneck it's the largest coal port in the world and two people or even one person if we you know didn't value the friends so much <laughs> could shut down this coal port for hours while they try and get us down um Zianna, do you want to speak a bit and i see if i can swap the camera around Oh, look at that. Is this the right way? Yeah, it's the right way. We can see you. Yeah, we're here with Blockade 
Australia. Um, if Australia is not confronted, it will continue to grow from us. You know, so many people are living from hand to mouth, struggling to pay their bills. We have Um, and there's now 53 people watching if you want to keep the up keep getting updated uh, and it seems like it's quite hard to hear Ziana because we're a little bit uh, far apart we're maybe a few meters apart um, so I'll just give you another induction for anyone that's coming coming onto the live stream we're hanging from this stack of reclaimer there is Ziana there is the search and rescue they've been here for about an hour so they're getting it together um, there is the ginormous piles of coal and around here huge scoopy scoopy doop um and over there is the other coal terminal which um processes a huge amount of coal also um so if anyone else wants to jump in that one <laughs> um yeah and there's support over that way and we're here because australia needs to be stopped on the ground and it needs to be stopped with direct action which cannot be uh, you know, put aside, it cannot be ignored. It's, disrupt it's disruption, which is, um, yeah, which is immediately felt to the corporate and institutional interests. It's disruption, which has garnered a strong response already in this um, period of action from Blockade, Blockade Australia. We've had 10 consecutive days of disruptions to the road, sorry, to the rail and ports of Port of Newcastle, the coal networks that are here. And Sit. During that period of time, we've seen an incredible politicised response, which has included an amping up in the legal system of how the police are treating people and what charges they're getting. They're, people are getting charges which are totally bullshit and designed to intimidate and scare people away from action, away from strategic action, action. and that's what the legal system will do. If they can't stop people on the ground, they'll go to where they can hurt you and they can get you under the thumb in the legal system or where they can think they can hurt you and they can scare you out of action because we are so much more powerful than them if we're not afraid and the legal system exists to keep us afraid and keep us um, yeah, from acting in a way which protects our own interests which is so different to the laws which protect the interests of the corporate elite and of the institutions that govern so-called Australia um, when I refer to so-called Australia, I mean the land mass and the people on it. When I refer to Australia, I refer to the corporations and political institutions which are governing us and which have exploited this land and are causing a climate crisis which will result in water wars, which will result in burning of um, habitat and homes and crops and will eventually result in the extinction of um, all complex life on this planet. So that's why we are here. Personally, I'm practicing not being afraid. I'm practicing remembering that the biggest weapon they have is not their guns, but their, our fear, and that they use that against us. They use that to keep us submissive. They use it to keep us from doing what is powerful, and what is powerful is targeting strategic points in the supply chain, strategic points in the operation that Australia is running against <laughs> most live on Earth for the interests of the corporate few. And so, we're taking action here. We are blockading the world's largest coal port. We are hanging from a stack of reclaimer. I wish you could have more scale for how big that is, but it's very big. Um, and yeah, we intend to be here for as long as we can. Search and rescue have arrived. We've been here at least an hour. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be a little bit longer still. And <laughs> Yeah, we're taking this action because the climate crisis we are in isn't one that we can sit idly by and watch unfold. It's going to result in the annihilation of life on this planet. It's going to result in, um, you know, a huge increase in human conflict. Um, we're going to see in my lifetime, oh God, it breaks my heart that there's people, I don't know, people my age, they have kids, and I just look at them like they're crazy. It's like, oh, that's great, well done, but also 
Don't you know what's going to happen? Don't you know what they're going to go through? Don't you know the wars they're going to see? The famines? The, you know, what they might be subject to? And yeah, I'm not going to sit idly by while that happens, maintain the point of comfort or, um, yeah, sit, <laughs> sit comfortably by and just hope that it doesn't get worse because we know it will get worse. We experienced the summer bushfires and that was the barest taste. We remember that, you know, the, um, the emergency response systems were so struggling to cope. Anyone that thinks that we can cope with disasters, we've got good systems in place, does not understand the extent of disasters we're going to be facing. The extent of disasters is going to be overwhelming. In even the Black Summer climate fires, the emergency resources were not able to respond. They were not able to keep up with it all. And that's just the barest inkling of what we're going to get to. So, yeah, remembering that however protected you might feel by the state, however protected you might feel by the society you're living under, Blockade Australia I see as important in undermining that lie that we've been fed for so long that it is here to protect us or that, you know, if, if anything bad goes wrong, it'll be there. It'll be there to make sure that we're okay and we are safe. When here you have, I don't know, four or five police cars that have arrived on site to take us down. I assume that's what they're doing. They might be getting there slowly, but I assume that's what they're doing. To protect the interests of a corporation which is shipping coal overseas from stolen land. Coal that we know is going to contribute to the climate crisis, but more importantly, coal that is being used to give huge, you know, financial benefit to a very small amount of people and centralise a really important resource, which is power and land, to the ownership of a very few people. And through this massive network, that is continued in a global way and um, people... Oh, sorry, <laughs> saying, keep holding the phone where you've got it now. Where is it now? I don't know. Um... <laughs> Hopefully this is okay. I do have a big ladder. Oh my gosh, I'm going to show you guys that. I don't know if that's their plan. <laughs> See, Anna's just pointed out that the ladder is not quite high enough. Um, yeah, but hopefully it makes it up. Maybe it's the camera a bit. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't really know where I was there. Basically, massive cold port, feeding the interests of a few corporate elite. Police are here to protect it because that's what the state does. It protects the corporate interest, um, the corporate interests, and two people are taking, well, I reckon, pretty brave. <laughs> I reckon fairly brave, non-violent direct action to shut down the coal port because Australia is a very big machine that has operated for over 250 years. Operates off the backs of stolen land, off the backs of a genocide, off the backs of you know the work of people that have been. Oh my gosh, they really are going with that letter. <laughs> um, you know, people that have, you know, been slaving away, not, not as slaves necessarily, but, you know, working under a system for the profit and the benefit of a very few at the top. And what that's resulted in now is a climate crisis because uh, information has been ignored and information has been hidden and information has been changed um, to maintain the continuation of industries which you know are very profitable to some people but also mean the annihilation of all life on earth and that position that we are in a position where Literally every living thing on earth, every complicated living thing on earth, maybe some bacteria will be okay, is at risk of total extinction, not even at risk, is projected to be totally extinct. But we maintain ourselves on that trajectory because the social systems that we're living under are set up to keep the voices of a few very strong and powerful and the voices of most people um, totally... Uh, uh, under, under, under the thumb, under, quietened down. So <laughs> that's why moving on to some action which is a little bit more 
direct, which cannot be ignored, is what we've decided to do and is what needs to be done to avert the climate crisis. We need people to be taking direct action, to be taking um, the position that we are in into their own hands because if we don't, um, yeah, we, can't, we, can't, we cannot expect anyone else to. The places where there is power, we've seen time and time again that the power be used to protect corporate interests and, you know, to maintain to, to maintain it where it is. So whatever, um, yeah, whatever greenwashed solutions have come out of Twiggy Forest or whoever else, um, we see that we see that um, the climate crisis needs to be averted through power being redistributed to the people that um, will be affected by it and one way that we can gain political power is by disrupting things and the Newcastle coal port is a great thing to disrupt it's the world's largest coal port and it um, supplies uh, I think largely China but I think also other places in the world with coal and it is extremely accessible lots of places in the in Australia or so-called Australia are extremely accessible to be disrupted by a couple of people with non-violent direct action and that action can create that action can create change and it can create political power because you're doing something which you know you're not asking anybody else to take notice of your interests you are you know advocating for your interests yourself in a real and physical way you're meeting australia on the ground you're getting in the way of the systems which they rely on which support them and you're yeah in intending we are intending to create a political crisis to the point where australia cannot function because the people which it is killing have risen up against it and that's what australia is doing australia is killing um, basically the earth <laughs> Australia is killing life on the planet and we are intending to get in the way so we see oh look at that zoom search and rescue is ascending with some looks like gears of bags of climb gear very schmick um, we'll see what their plan is for how they intend to get us down see we're attached um, from stacker reclaimer and oh as if you can't zoom out again Anyway, attached from a stacker reclaimer. Look now, you got all that zoom. You can see how big that thing is. That's what scoops up the coal, puts it in the piles. And yeah, so we're up here on stolen land, a wobble more in my country. And we're taking direct action because direct action is how people can garner political power. People cannot get political power by <laughs> voting. People cannot get political power. Oh, they're using that ladder for the, um, just to get up the slope, that's interesting. Um, yeah, people cannot get political power by voting or petitions or even by rallies. Because if you notice how there's a police escort at rallies and they just walk you around the block, <laughs> it's like, the, <laughs> the, if, you, if you're asking the state to change something and they're accommodating by letting you have a little parade around the block, then your means of protest probably isn't very effective. So anyway, that's my personal view. Um, so that's why we're not doing that. That's why we're instead, I've sailed off a stack of reclaimer. Um, there you can see search and rescue coming in on top of me there. And we are here with Blockade Australia to disrupt the machine that is intent on killing all life on earth. Um, Ziana, do you want to try speak again and you guys comment if, if we can't hear or do you not want to do that? Cool. Can people hear Ziana? I can't tell. I can hear Ziana. Oh no, yell, they say. <laughs> yell! <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Okay. You can. You can. If you if you think of good lines to yell at me, you can you know yell it over the top. <laughs> Um, okay, I hope that we're here a little bit longer, um, but Search and Rescue have come up, you know, they're obviously moving along, maybe they're getting the hang of things. Um, I'd like to note that this has been one of, uh, oh, how many? Something like 15, 16 actions, it's the 10th consecutive day of disruption against the world's largest coal port and the rail that supplies it um, from Blockade Australia. <laughs> and what an incredible thing that is, that something can be formed out of nothing to disrupt a really critical point in the operation of a huge machine that is very well funded. When I refer to a machine, I'm referring to Australia, not this particular coal port, um, although I'm sure that's well funded as well. And we can be here disrupting it and getting in the way and imagine what would happen if, you know, 10 times as many people came to the to disrupt Sydney in at the next event, which is... Um, uh, it's the 27th of June. It's um, link in the description of this video. And yeah, remember that if if you're terrified of climate collapse because you're terrified of running out of food or water or being um, dominated in the social destruction which will follow, um, if you're terrified of losing your home or your family to natural disasters um, then yeah remember that you're not going to be looked after um, by the state you're not going to be looked after by um, by these guys because they won't be able to well maybe also because the facade will be broken and it will be very clear that um, the police force was never really protecting people so much as corporate interests but even if even if the facade wasn't broken there's going to be more disasters than um, we have the capacity to handle so don't wait or don't hope that somebody else will act or don't hope that somebody will protect you don't be overwhelmed by anxiety to the point of not being able to do anything I mean I think that's all like reasonable because it's a existential crisis that we're facing and it's fucking terrifying but <laughs> let's remember that um yeah it's up to us now this is like yeah balls in our court and we know what's happening we know what has happened and we can't pretend that we didn't know we can't pretend that the reason we didn't do something wasn't simply because we weren't brave enough or because we were just hoping or lying to ourselves about what might happen next. So anyway, there's a bit of an ideological spiel. Don't worry too much about it. We're here for anyone that's just started listening again. We're in the world's largest coal port. We're disrupting operations. Here's my friend Ziana. Um, and here's Search and Rescue that are fiddling away. The untied a rope that the cops tied, but that's okay, I'm not attached to it. Um, and yeah, we're disrupting the world's largest coal port. We're getting in the way of Australia because Australia is a threat to us. It's a threat to the continent. It's a threat to all life on earth. And we cannot think that the vested interests of corporate Australia will change. We cannot think that the vested interests of institutional Australia will change. They remain with an, a small elite and yeah, Australia was built to extract, Australia was built to exploit, it's been doing that for 250 years, it's been doing that off the backs of stolen land, stolen lives and that's coming to a point of, yeah, it's culminating in the climate crisis, it's culminating in an existential threat to all living things, so it's a pretty radical point in time to be living and it's a pretty crazy point in time to not be radical, so that's why we're here blocking the world's largest coal port, which is um, part of global supply chains and a really amazing symbolic and real part of Australia's political and economic power. So we're blockading it. There's two of us inside this terminal and it's pretty heavily protected now. There was a police chopper flying overhead not too long ago. Um, which, yeah, is maybe a good thing to remember that 
that's where the funding goes uh, goes to protect places like this and if you start being effective then they might come down real hard and so it's important to push through and be brave and so that's why I'm here and yeah we're working towards a blockade Australia is working towards a network of people which are you know willing <laughs> and organized and able <laughs> to participate in direct action.